Hey, this is Darren from Property Prosperity. Today I thought I'd have a bit of a chat about a movie I watched last night. It, uh, it was called The Big Short. I don't know if anyone's seen it before, but uh, it sort of revolves around the global financial crisis and sort of what the steps leading up to the global financial crisis and how it all came about. So the thing that I think it's you know useful for us, the thing that's useful for us as part of property developers um, and, and property investors that we really, I think, is really important to understand. I suppose before I get into that, maybe I'll explain to you that the, what happened with the GFC, basically, was what happens was um, people started, um, you know, the banks, essentially, were giving out loans to people to buy properties. And what they started realizing is they were making quite a lot of money out of these, these loans. And the way they made their money was based on essentially how risky the loans were and so they were finding out that they actually made more money if the loans were res less risky than if they were more risky because essentially if they were more risky then you know less people want to buy them and they'd have to charge you know pay people a premium to be able to borrow their money to invest in in more risky loans essentially so they started realizing if they lent out some money to a person that was quite secure they would get a certain return for their money um, whereas if they lent out their money to someone that's a bit riskier, they would have to actually pay more money out to be able to get that money. So what they started doing is mixing and matching. They started mixing risky loans in with not so risky loans. And because they were, you know, the system was in cahoots with them, essentially the ratings agency will rate how risky their 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 loan portfolio is or their loans were, then they realized that they were you know, they didn't want to rock the boat, essentially. And so they essentially rated everything as not very risky because historically, you know, property hasn't been a risky investment. And so everyone was relying on the fact that because in the past it hadn't been particularly risky to invest in property, then there's no reason to think it would be in the future. So what happens, the, the bank started testing the waters by mixing a few riskier loans with not so risky loans, finding out they could still you know, get the same sort of returns on their money if um, if they mixed in a few riskier loans. And so what they started finding is they, they could mix in riskier and riskier loans and it wasn't affecting their, their ratings and their the risk rating essentially. And so that means they could get the higher returns that they would get for a less risky loan compared to a risky loan and still um, not be punished in any financial way essentially. And so what happened over time, their, their loans became riskier and riskier and riskier until at some point in time, Someone called them out on it and they realized how risky it was and then people decided they wanted to pull out of you know, the, the real estate market essentially. And when they, once they started pulling out of the market, then it just all compounded essentially and then so they started realizing everything, everybody how dangerous it was to invest out in these loans that people couldn't pay back and the property market become overheated and it just compounded and built on itself until eventually the property market collapsed. Because it was it was so overly exposed the the property market, then um, it just had ramifications throughout the whole world essentially. So, watch the movie; it explains it pretty well. So, apologies if it didn't make a lot of sense. But um, the reason that I think it's important, and again, it doesn't really matter if you really understand the process of of um, you know investing in banks and so forth, and what happened during the GFC. The thing that I think is is important to understand, and the reason why the GFC happened in the first place, is people had trust in the system. People had trust um, historically that, that um, investing in real estate was not risky, and people had trust in you know, banks themselves weren't being risky, and they had trust that the, the banking system was prudential, uh, prudent and, and were doing the right thing. And I think that's the thing to understand is you can't always rely on the system. You can't always rely on the system to do the right thing. And in, and in this case, you know, banks, because they were private companies, their, their job was to make money and they were focused on making money. What's the best way for them to make money? And essentially, when you've got that situation where, you know, a company, their whole priority and their whole job is to make money, they're going to do whatever they can to try and make money. And so the problem was originally back in the old days, it was sort of, considered that the banking industry and and you know lending money to people to invest in property was almost like a public good you know it was it was something that people would do to to sustain the economy and as a as a bedrock of the economy basically and so what but what happened over time as banks became greedier and greedier and focused more and more on making money then you know that that initial assumption that banks were always going to do the right thing was flawed and so but the thing is we still had our mindset that you know the banks were always going to do the right thing and we can believe in the system because you know it hadn't failed us before so why would it fail us again essentially and so 
the reason why I think that's important is because a lot of us have preconceptions. We also think about, you know, what's going to, you know, you know, what can go wrong or, or sometimes we just assume things that, uh, and particularly, you know, my first example was, you know, I, I assumed that everyone knew more than I did when I first started out. And so I had the opportunity to, my very first investment property, to be honest, was a, a property that was an, it was a subdivision from one into nine. So you can imagine for a person that never, you know, bought an investment property before and never done any developing before, you can imagine how risky that is. And to be honest, it was pretty risky. And so I had no idea what I was doing, but I did the numbers and the numbers seemed to make sense. And I just couldn't see how I couldn't make money out of this development. And so it, I did it so many times. I went through all different scenarios. I thought, there's just no way this isn't going to work. The reason why I doubted myself and the reason why I thought maybe I shouldn't buy this property was because the person that was selling it to me was actually a real estate agent themselves. And I'm like, it just seems it seems too good to be true where I've done all these numbers and I just can't see how I can lose money. But why would this real estate agent, who's obviously a lot more educated than me, why would he go out there and sell this property that was potentially profitable and to me, some person that's a novice? And so... I really doubted myself. I went off and, and investigated with a few different other people. I had, you know, had a chat to everyone I could. Basically, I said, "Hey, look at this scenario. Look at, you know, look at where I could lose some money." And, and everyone that looked at it said, "Hey, I can't see how you're going to lose on this thing. You know, it, it's going to totally, you know, make money because where can you go wrong, essentially?" And then when I explained to me to them that I was buying it off a real estate agent that was selling his property to me, pretty much everyone said, "Well, maybe you shouldn't do it because at the end of the day." Yeah, you know, he knows more than you, so why would he be selling it to you if there was all this profit in the deal? So saying that, I decided to take a bit of a punt, even though it was my first property, and I just took a big deep in the a big jump in the deep end and bought the property and then struggled my way through the process. To be honest, I didn't really know what I was doing, so it was a massive learning curve. So this was probably about 14 years ago, so it was quite a long time ago. So obviously I've learned a lot more since then. And then slowly I struggled my way through until you know, I actually got to the end and I made money and I made profit and I didn't, even looking back, you know, during the time and at the end of the process and even looking back now, I still don't understand why that guy sold it to me in the first place. You know, why didn't he do it himself? For me to buy the property, I had to pay stamp duty, I had holding costs, I had interest costs, I had a whole pile of issues that he didn't have associated because he already owned the property. So why didn't he do it? The thing is, sometimes you just, just don't doubt yourself at the end of the day, regardless of, you know, what your assumptions are about the preconceptions of other people and the system and the process, you know, just don't doubt yourself because if, if you've done all your research and you believe that you can't go wrong, then you just got to give it a go at the end of the day. All you can do is as much as you possibly can by checking all the checks and balances and at some point in time, you just have to go and give it a go. So, you know, plenty of scenarios like that over the years, you know, particularly when I first started out, you know, I used to go to used to do all this research on buying a, a property and looked at all these scenarios on how I could subdivide it and maybe knock half the house down and do this and do a renovation here and move this across here and try and, you know, try and fit in this extra block in there so I can try and, you know, increase my returns. And, you know, there's quite often you'd go along to, to um, auctions and you'd have, you know, you'd go along with all these scenarios and how you can try and make money and you think, hey, the maximum I can possibly pay is, is the X price. And if it goes any more than that, there's just no way I can make money out of it because I've looked at every possible scenario and that's my only logical scenario of how I can make the most amount of money out of the deal. You go there and you're standing at the auction, some guy rocks up in a Porsche and he's got a suit on, he's got a little clipboard, he's got, and you're like, man, this guy knows a lot more than me because I don't, you know, I don't have a Porsche and I don't have a clipboard, so how am I going to compete against this guy? And you go, and when the, the the auction happens, this guy starts bidding, bidding, bidding. Bid's probably 50 grand more than I'm willing to pay. And I'm like, man, this guy must be so much smarter than me because I'm putting so much effort to try and work out the most profitable way to do this development. And I can't work out how you could pay possibly any more than you know the maximum that I was willing to pay. So crazy thing is you drive past 12 months later. And this is the thing about things when you've been around for long enough. You can actually see what happens in the future, really. You look back what's happened in, from um, properties from the past and you look back and see what's actually happened and you found... You know, that guy driving the Porsche with the suit and the clipboard, he didn't do half of the things that I was going to do that was going to make, you know, way more money. And he paid way more than I was going to pay. And I still couldn't justify buying the property. And you look back and you've, he's lost money on it. And you're like, well, maybe people don't more, know more than what I do. And maybe I should go out and take, rely on my own skills and knowledge and expertise and all the research I've done. So... So why that matters and why this, why talking about that movie, The Big Short, is you know, a lot of the reason why 
things went wrong is people just believed in the system. They believed in their own preconceptions. And you know, just like I believe that a real estate agent wouldn't know more than me, or this guy rocked up in a fancy suit wouldn't know more than me. There's no reason to think that the the market knows more um, the the system or the you know the banks or anyone else knows them more than you. All you can do is rely on logic and common sense. If lo- if your logic and common sense says that it just doesn't make sense, then then don't go ahead, regardless of who says it's a good idea or who said it's a good investment or if it just doesn't make sense to you. And that's one of the reasons why you really have to understand some of these things. You know, one of the reasons why the global financial crisis happened was because a lot of the banks and the stockbrokers and all that sort of stuff, they were creating these really complex products that no one really knew what they were and no one understood them. And so common sense and logic can go out of the window. If no one really understands what what anyone's talking about, then you just jumping in behind everybody else you end up being sheep following everyone else and so you know there's a high chance things are going to go wrong if you don't actually understand what you're talking about so so basically that's my my thing for today is basically just go out and do your research use some common sense and if it makes sense to you it doesn't matter what other people think if it seems like a good deal then it's probably a good deal and you should just take advantage of the opportunity and, and don't doubt yourself and just get out there and do it so you know, if you've liked what I had to say, click on the like button. If you haven't liked what I had to say, then still click on the like button. You know, I tell you, go out and watch that movie because, you, yeah, you've definitely learned some things along the way and you might be able to apply that to some of your property investing as well. If you've got an example where you've gone against the trend and done the opposite of what other people are doing, then I'd love to hear about it. Put a comment in the comment box or, you know, if you know someone out there is doing doing the opposite of what other people are doing, you're seeing they're having some success out of it, then click on the share button. I'm sure they'll appreciate it. And I look forward to chatting you again next time. And yeah, if you've got something you'd like me to talk about in the future episode, put a comment in the comment box. I'm happy to chat about it. Thanks, guys. Talk to you next time. Bye for now.